After my recent video where we did an in-depth look at every single platform of Mjolnir, including its predecessors, I figured it's about time that we give a very specific suit a little bit of a closer look. This suit has only been seen in action on only one occasion, however the projects that went into making it were exactly the same projects that led to the creation of the Mark 1, Mark 2, II, Mark 3 and eventually the Cyclops and different mech variants that we get in some of the games since. On top of this, it's also a powered exosuit that can be worn by practically anybody. The only problem herein is that it actually costs even more than Mjolnir did, and at least to my knowledge, only one platform was ever created. Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and today we're taking a close look at the Hrunting Yggdrasil Mark 1 prototype armour defence system. Let's do this. It's worth clearing up at the onset that the Hrunting Yggdrasil is actually an amalgamation of two separate projects. Project Yggdrasil and Project Hrunting were both projects initialised in the first instance by the Office of Naval Intelligence in and around the mid-26th century. It is believed this instruction came directly from Vice Admiral Danforth Whitcomb. Project Yggdrasil actually covered the development of different mechanised platforms by the Materials Group the aim being in re-engineering strategically significant technologies from the Mjolnir powered assault armour for integration into this new project. The most significant of these technologies coalescing into what we now know as the Mantis. Project Hrunting was most well known for the development of the Mark III Cyclops which saw its most significant application with the Spirit of Fire, both in 2531 and in 2559. Both Project Hrunting and Project Yggdrasil were developed by a branch of the materials group on Algolis, albeit in their own separate contained projects and at slightly different times. It is then hardly surprising, given that they were developed by the same people, that the two projects that were building large powered exoskeletons would unite their research and the backward compatible technology gleaned from the Mjolnir platform to make something altogether more powerful. The one known example of the Mark I prototype armor defense system is the result of that combination of research. It was a massive bipedal powered exoskeleton where the operator would actually be housed within the torso area of the suit. It featured the same permutation of titanium as the UNSC battleships and Mjolnir for its armor plating, but also brought into the fray nanocomposite titanium fibers. These were woven into a soft armour that covered the areas between rotational points of the armour. It had power assist systems that were strong enough to cancel out the colossal weight of the suit, while also being able to perform superhuman feats without the need for the occupant to be augmented in any way, and likely made it strong enough to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against any species of the Covenant and win hands down. The suit possessed very sophisticated HUD technology which was very similar to that of Mjolnir itself and possessed extremely sophisticated target assessment protocols. The right arm was dedicated almost exclusively to an 850 round 6 barreled T261 Lucifer arm mounted Gatling gun. This weapon fired 20mm high explosive rounds at 2980 rounds per minute. During the events of the one time that it was seen in combat, it was never seen to be being reloaded which makes the assumption that the suit itself is actually capable of carrying the 850 rounds. On top of the Gatling gun itself, again mounted on the right arm, was a very large barreled grenade launcher. The right shoulder sported a tri-barreled LAU-1810 SGM-151 missile launcher which fired heat-seeking guided armour-piercing missiles. On the left shoulder was the M149 Magellan recoilless rifle which fired 50 explosive 105mm rounds with a 5m blast radius. The left arm sported two more missile tubes which fired the same missiles as the missile launcher trio mounted on the shoulder and ended with a mechanical hand which was capable of manipulating objects including the manual firing of the shoulder mounted recoilless rifle. On each thigh were three magnetic claymores which could be handled manually and attached to objects via the magnetism. On top of this plethora of offensive weaponry, the suit also possessed impressive defensive and passive mechanisms as well, one of which being the jetpack which had four stabilizing thrusters, two on the front and two on the back, 
and afterburner thrusters located on the back and front of the suit. Directional control was performed by simply shifting the centre of gravity of the suit by the operator. When not in use, all of the thrusters folded down into slots to protect them from damage. The platform also had an extremely powerful bubble shield capable of defending the entire suit and an area of effect around it. The bubble shield was dynamic in nature which meant that it only came into play when the suit was actually attacked. This saved a lot of energy and it meant that the suit lacked the constant form fitting energy shields that were used by Mjolnir. However the bubble shield still performed well under the one observed circumstance of being in combat. The whole suit was powered by the same nuclear fusion backpack that Mjolnir was. The suit's final defensive feature was a 300 megaton lead tampered nuclear fission self destruct device. This ensured not only that the advanced technology contained within the suit didn't fall into enemy hands but also took out a large portion of the enemy forces with it. The one and only time that this suit was witnessed being used in battle was in the Algolis invasion. At some time between 2548 and 2552, the human colony of Algolis was attacked by the Covenant. The Covenant's main objective was the destruction of the very weapons facility that this suit and others like it were being developed at. Upon confirmation of invasion, the Cole Protocol was enacted. Since the suit was in prototype stage and there was no way to get the suit off of the planet quick enough, the decision was made to destroy the suit. However, upon activating the destruction sequence, the suit had a countdown timer. During this time, a marine known as Ghost took control of the exoskeleton and used it to buy all of the marine forces and civilians in the area time to escape. During this time, he savagely tore through hordes of alien aggressors, using the suit's impressive armament and capabilities to hold back the invasion force single-handedly and destroy many of their heavy weapons and armour in the process. Ultimately, continued development of this kind of suit was abandoned simply because each platform cost even more than Mjolnir did. However, many of its innovations were still seen through and implemented into some of the newer platforms that we've seen in recent years, including the Mantis, the Colossus and the Mega Mantis. But in the great scheme of things, that doesn't really matter. Yes, the suit was prototyped and yes, it was awesome. But ultimately that one suit was piloted by Ghost and was able to hold back an entire invading army while both marines and civilians evacuated the planet. The actions of one man behind the controls of one suit saved hundreds if not thousands of people and his fight ultimately came to a close by taking a huge portion of the invading army with him denying the military assets and intelligence from the weapons facilities nearby, saving those people and sending a clear message to the Covenant hierarchs that humanity will not go down without a fight. And all of this from uttering the term, be human. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons Neek, the Silent Cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalker of the Realms, Falcon X003, Alvin DW, Flaming Halo, and the Revanche, the Holds of the Mantle, my glorious reclaimers, my loyal Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo Lord Disgust to insane loves of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second any video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord, and if you really love the channel consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and will free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>